Hello everyone, this is Rajaka Janjala. I am an educator at Academy. You can follow me on Unacademy Learning App where you can find my other course as well. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the design of concentric sprints. And please rate, review and share the video and also subscribe to Unacademy YouTube channel. Welcome again to design of concentric sprints. So in this lecture, we are going to find the relation for the force transmitted by each spring in a concentric spring when the concentric spring is under the application of an axial load of magnitude P. So the design of concentric spring is based on the following assumptions. The springs are made of the same material and the maximum torsion shear stresses induced in outer and inner springs are equal. They have the same free length which means the length of the springs when there is no loading acting on those springs. Okay. So both springs are deflected by the same amount and therefore have the same solid length. And since the maximum torsion shear stresses induced in both springs are equal, that is given by tau n equals to tau 2, right? So from the formula for the total shear stress developed in the spring wire is given by K into 8 PD by pi D cube. We can use this relation for the two springs. We have K1 equals into 8 P1 D1 by pi D1 cube equals to K2 into 8 P2 D2 by pi D2 cube, right? And for the time being, we will neglect the effect of the wall factor and assuming that k1 equals to k2. So, therefore, from this relation, we have k1 equals to k2 and cancelling out k1, k2 and pi 8, we can get p1 d1 by d1 cube equals to p2 d2 by d2 cube. This relation obtained by making the values of the total shear stresses developed in the two springs equal. And since the deflections of the two springs are equal, when the concentric spring is under the application of an equal force, we have delta 1 equals to delta 2, right? And we have the formula for the deflection developed in the helical springs. We have 8 into P1 D1 cube N1 by G D1 to the power of 4, right? And for the spring 2, we have 8 P2 D2 cube N2 by G into d2 to the power of 4 so these are the deflections for the two springs and they are equal here so on cancelling out the same terms in this equation we get p1 d1 cube into n1 by d1 to the power of 4 equals to p2 d2 cube into by d2 to the power of 4 and and this relation is obtained by making the deflections equal since the solid length of the both springs is equal, we have D1 N1 equals to D2 N2, where N1 and N2 are the number of coils in spring 1 and spring 2. In the above expression, it is assumed that the, there are no inactive coils. The total number of coils is equal to the number of active coils. So here, N1 and N2 are the active coils in the two springs. And rearranging the equation obtained by the deflections, we have P1 D1 cube N1 D1 by d1 to the power of 4 and p2 d2 cube into by d2 by d2 to the power of 5 and this relation is obtained by multiplying and dividing d1 and d1 this side and also d2 this side so we have this relation so n1 d1 equals to n2 d2 right from the from this relation where the solid length of two springs are equal we can cancel out n1 d1 and n2 d2 from this equation so we will get p1 d1 cube by d1 to the power of 5 and p2 d2 cube by d2 to the power of 5 okay and this relation obtained from the deflection and by making the the solid length of two springs is equal and dividing the equation p1 d1 cube by d1 to the power of 4 5 equals to p2 d2 cube by d2 to the power of 5 by the equation p1 d1 d1 cube equals to p2 d2 by d2 cube we will get d1 square by d1 small d1 square that is equals to d2 square by small d2 square by d1 and d2 are the mean coil diameter and small d, d is the, the the diameter of the spring wire and as we know d1 by d1 small d1 is equals to d2 by small d2 that is equals to three. c the spring cost spring index of the helical springs so as you can observe here we have condi we have this condition where d1 by d1 equals to d2 by small d2 where these are the spring index of 
1 spring 1 and this is a spring index of the spring 2 so we have came to the conclusion that the spring index of the two springs in that concentric spring is equal on substituting the equation d1 by d small d1 equals to d2 by small d2 equals to 3 in the equation p1 d1 by d1 cube equals to p2 capital d2 by d2 cube we get p1 by d1 equals to p1 d2 square equals to p1 by p2 that is equals to d1 square by d2 square so p1 by and solving for p1 by p2 will get pi d1 square by pi d2 square that is equals to a1 by a2 right so the force the loading setting on the two springs of a concentric spring are proportional to the cross-sectional area of the wire so the clearance between the inner diameter of the outer diameter and outer diameter of the inner spring is important parameter in design of concentric springs it should have set a minimum value to account for diameter expansion of springs under the load okay suppose c is the radial clearance between the spring shown in the figure and the following relation can be written so observe this figure this is the outer sp outer spring and this is inner spring and you can see this is the mean coil diameter for the outer spring and d2 is the mean coil diameter of the inner spring and see here d1 equals to c 2c plus 2 d by 2 2 into d by 2 plus d2 right so we can write d1 equals to d2 plus this one d2 by 2 plus d2 by 2 this part and this part and 2c this one and this one and plus d1 by 2 plus d1 by 2 right so 2c equals to d1 minus d2 minus small d1 plus d2 on solving for c we have d1 minus d2 by 2 plus small d1 plus small d2 by 2 so in the design of concentric springs the diameter clearance 2c is taken as the difference between y diameter therefore we have 2c equals to the difference between y diameters will be d1 minus d2 and solving for c we have we have d1 minus d2 by 2 so from the equation c equals to d1 minus d2 by 2 plus minus small d1 plus small d2 by 2 and the above equation this one c equals to d small d1 minus small d2 by 2 we have d1 minus d2 by 2 equals to capital d1 minus capital d2 by 2 that minus d1 plus d2 by 2 so on substituting d1 equals to cd1 and d2 equals to cd2 where c is the the spring index of both springs and it is equal right on substituting these values we get d1 by d2 equals to c by c minus 2 so this equation and p1 by d1 equals to p1 by d2 square and that is equals to p1 by p2 that is equals to d1 square by d2 square here this part of this equation p1 by p2 equals to d1 square by d2 square and d1 by d2 equals to c by c minus 2 are used to find the forces transmitted by each spring in a concentric spring and with the help of these two forces we can find the critical stresses in the both springs and with the values of critical stresses we can apply one of the failures of th theories of failure on finding the permissible stress values with the help of those values we can find the safe design of these two springs in a concentric spring so these two equations are very important where d1 small d1 by d2 equals to c by c minus 2 and p1 by p2 equals to d1 square by d2 square where p1 is the force transmitted by spring 1 and p2 is the force transmitted by spring 2 and d1 and d2 are the the, the spring y diameter of spring 1 and spring 2 and c is the the spring index of both springs in a constant thank you